Hello students, uh, yesterday uh, we uh, had uh, uh, the second part of uh, poets and uh, pancakes explanation. Uh, so those character stage was going on and uh, we will be uh, having a, a journey uh, moving forward uh, from there only. Today also we will be uh, having more uh, emphasis on uh, the character called Kot Manglam Sabbo. Kot Manglam Sabbo, uh, uh, the first thing you got to remember or got to learn about him that he was uh, considered uh, number two. He was number two at Germany Studio. Second, we had uh, uh, the ability to look cheerful all the time. Third, he was loyal uh, to uh, his boss and his benefits. Then uh, he, uh, you could uh, uh, find him, see him always uh, doing uh, some sort of help, some sort of work of uh, generosity for other. He was a selfless guy there. Huh? Still. Surprisingly, astoundingly, he, he got a, a, a few enemies also at a Germany studio. Let us resume the journey from Subhu's character ahead of it. Uh, Jonah, uh, Subhu around and if ever there was a man who could uh, give direction and definition to Germany studio during its golden years, it was Subhu. When we talk about the golden era of uh, Germany studio, it, it was around 1945. Uh, to 1955 there. So those glorious uh, uh, legacy, uh, uh, the era of uh, uh, Germanist Leo. Yes, uh, obviously Sabu was uh, the part and parcel for uh, that uh, glorious uh, years or the glorious uh, success uh, that was just earned by Germany Studio and uh, its movies. Huh? Uh, and though definition to German history during its court, it was Subu. Subu had a separate identity as a poet and yesterday also I told you something about uh, Subu's character that he was not. He was a multifaceted, he was a, 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 a seven-sided genius there. Huh? Okay, he was not only a poet, he was not only a writer, he was not only a playwright, he was not only a director, he was not only a, 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 a person who belongs to a technical aspect of uh, filmmaking. But, um, uh, moreover, he uh, was instrumental, he was tailor made uh, for uh, films there. Means film uh, making would have been very easy, okay, uh, if you got uh, Subu uh, around you. Huh? And then, uh, higher forms, he deliberately chose to address his poetry uh, to the masses. His success in films overshadowed and dwarfed his literary achievements there. Overshadowed, overpower, outshone. Overshadowed, outshone. As you see, when we talk about a person's success, if a person is a multi-sided genius there, that his achievements will be evaluated by the people or his fan following and by the audience, by the spectators, by the readers, uh, by the people on uh, uh, behalf, on the basis of his uh, success which he earned. But when we talk about his poetic genius and poetic excellence there, he was frustrated poet. But since he uh, devoted all his breath and being uh, more time, more dedication, more devotion uh, to filmmaking, therefore his, uh, 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 what say, his personality as a poet, his achievements as a poet, uh, okay, uh, were dwarfed, minimized, reduced, okay, when it is compared to his success in filmmaking there. So we can say he was a great poet, but since he devoted his more breath and being more time, more devotion, more uh, endeavors he put in filmmaking. Therefore, his achievements as a poet were dropped, were minimized, were reduced, uh, were outshone, by outplayed, by uh, outpowered. Uh, okay, uh, by his uh, uh, filmy success there. Huh? Otherwise, he would have been uh, a great poet uh, also. His uh, uh, poetry, his literary creations were uh, dedicated to, were devoted to, were based on common masses, common people, common masses, common people. Therefore, he was able to touch uh, a more number of people okay, uh, through his uh, writings, since uh, they were based on the life of the commoners. Uh, masses, his success in film, our, uh, that was over. So, his critic fails. You see, every uh, legend, every actor, every writer, every celebrity has got uh, uh, his fan following as well as critics also. Even his critics also felt that his literary genius uh, was outplayed, was outshone, was uh, reduced, was dropped uh, okay, by his uh, filmy success. Okay? Uh, his critic also felt the same. 
Uh, he composed several uh, truly original story poems in folk refrain and diction. Folk refrain and diction in uh, uh, in local colloquial uh, language there. Okay, is a, a refrain there, a poetic uh, device uh, which is used by the poet in the manner of writing where he reiterates the same thought on the basis of the common masses life there is called refrain there. Diction generally means it a manner of speaking, manner of walking, uh, manner of talking, uh, but here it means that uh, those stories, diction here, those stories which were based on a common refrain, uh, the life of the common masses uh, gained more and more popularity in, 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 at that time there. Still, he, he could not cash his literary genius when it is compared to his success, uh, his achievements in filmmaking uh, for a uh, German studio. A refrain and diction also wrote a sprawling novel, Tilana Mohan Balam, uh, with dozens of very deftly, cleverly, deftly, cleverly, uh, 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 sprawling, spreading, sprawling, blooming, sprawling, spreading, blooming, blossoming, blossoming uh, uh, poems in folk uh, novel and uh, he, uh, he wrote novel also. And the famous novel written by uh, him was uh, in Tilana Mohan Balam. The Lana Mohan Bal, uh, you, you got to remember uh, you know, the, the, the ethical uh, novel written by um, this uh, Mr. Kotman among Lam Subbu was the Lana Mohan Bal. He also wrote many poems, he also wrote uh, uh, folk refrain uh, diction many, okay, he wrote uh, many literary things based on the life of the common people there, common masses there. His critics felt he composed probably dozens of and many more other literary things also. Deftly, cleverly, deftly, cleverly means we can witness the human, uh, the genius of uh, Mr. Subhu as a poet, as a writer in his literary creations. That he was not only a tailor made or instrumental or a frustrated person when it comes to filmmaking, he, he, he was also a tremendous, tremendous poet and writer or a novelist. Uh, to the mood, uh, he quiet, uh, deftly etched, written down, etched, carved, etched, and carved. Etched here, written down, created, created uh, characters there. Whatever novels, whatever stories, okay, he has taken down. Some of the characters, okay, really uh, immortalized by him. Some of the characters were immortalized uh, by him. There, such uh, was a genius, uh, Mr. Subhu, as a writer, as a poet also. He quite successfully recreated, regenerated, recreated, regenerated uh, uh, the mood and manner of the Dasis of the early 20th century. Underline this line, please. There, he recreated means many uh, writers before also might have written down uh, some supplementary notes, the bigger notes, uh, uh, some stories, uh, uh, some. Uh, he says some articles on the life, mood and manner, on the total life of the Devdasi. Devdasi, as you see, uh, in 20th century, okay, it all started in 18th century onwards, but he wrote more uh, his contents on the life of Devdasi, belong to 20th century. Huh? So Devdasi were the uh, girls, were the women, unmarried obviously, uh, they were, who uh, decided uh, to take a, a, a stern uh, a way. A uh, uh, way where uh, they can uh, devote their old time in penance there, in severe penance to Almighty, to God there, who took a diversion from materialistic life and adopted the way uh, of spirituality. Spirituality where they can devote their entire life, entire time, entire breath and being to one that is uh, Almighty God, Almighty. Or such women were known as Devdasi. So he wrote many of the stories, many of his writings on the life, on the experience, on the sea penance undergone, experience observed uh, by Devdasis of 20th century. He wrote many things about Devdasis also. Devdasis were the girls who took a diversion uh, from destruction, aversion we can say, diversion we can say, okay, from uh, the, the materialistic life and uh, obviously adopted a spiritual path towards uh, uh, God there and they had no connection with this materialistic life there. Huh? Such women were known as the Dasis of 20th century. 
Here at 20th century, he was an imaging actor and not over. Character sketch of Sugu is not over. He was not only a poet, he was not only a novelist, he was not only a writer or a playwright or a, a, a great uh, technical advisor to filmmaking, but also a tremendous, tremendous actor too. He was. He never aspired to the lead roles, uh, but whatever subsidiary, side role, subsidiary, supplementary, subsidiary, side role, okay, uh, miniature role, uh, small roles. Uh, he uh, role he played in any uh, of the films he performed better than the supposed main players there. He was not ambitious fellow. He was not ambitious fellow. Whatever role came to his way, whether it was a subsidiary role or a, 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 a small role or a, 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 a side hero role there, okay, he just pounced uh, the opportunity or grabbed the opportunity by uh, his both hands there. He didn't go for uh, okay, uh, to, to act the main lead uh, 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 role in a particular movie. The subsidiary role came to his way, he just adopted it. But uh, the character of subsidiary role uh, played by uh, uh, Subbo even outshone, even outplayed uh, uh, the acting of the main, uh, so called main uh, lead hero also. I mean, it, it, so, uh, it was all the sheer display of his talent. Uh, being a subsidiary actor of a movie, he was able to outshine uh, even the main uh, lead uh, hero. So, uh, that was the mark of uh, a classic actor, Mr. Subbo. And uh, okay, Praman Bhatta, Devadasi's actor, he never aspired, never longed aspired, never wished. Okay, because people now want, sir, please take me as a main lead, please take me as a main, main hero, give me more witness in my role, this and that. He never aspired for that. Whatever role came, he just uh, pounced on it. Huh? Uh, he grabbed that, he accepted that, huh? without any ambition. Huh? Uh, aspired to the lead role on the subject the supposed main plays. He had a genuine love for anyone he came across and his house was a permanent residence for dozens of near uh, foreign relations and acquaintances there. He was a generous uh, soul. He was a generous uh, soul. He was a great uh, host, a uh, great uh, example of hospitality. Uh, okay, uh, throughout of the year, prized out, uh, displayed by uh, Mr. Subbo. His home, okay, in Chennai was a permanent shelter, not uh, for his close kith and kin, far and wide distant relatives also if they came to Chennai, uh, obviously uh, Mr. Uh, Subbu really uh, uh, gave a, a, a great hand of generosity, uh, not to close kins, uh, but also the distant relatives there, uh, okay, uh, generous uh, man, he was benevolent soul, he had, uh, even for distant relatives there, as his home was a permanent shelter, for many people who came, uh, many people, maybe his friend, maybe his relative, maybe his kin, maybe his kins there, a uh, distant relative also so came, uh, they, they used okay, uh, Mr. Subbu's home at, uh, as their shelter, okay. Whatever uh, days they uh, stayed in uh, Chennai, let it be a day or two or three or four, uh, they, they used his home as a shelter. Uh, far relation quite a, a con it seemed against Sabu's nature to be even conscious aware conscious aware that he was feeding and supporting so many of them there such a charitable and improvident man uh, improvident man very much generous very much benevolent very much uh, uh, out hearted open hearted person okay improvident man he was uh, uh, spent money lavishly improvident spent money lavishly on his guests there or obviously you, you, you can't have a better host than that of Mr. Subbu Janbas he was, improvident soul he has got, generosity bestowed over by him to all his relatives whether it is a close one or a distant one there, a selfless guy he was, a great actor he was, great poet he was, uh, he was talent made for films there, okay filmmaking became very much easy, he was very much easy having Subbu around you, he was loyal to his boss, principal or SS person, Okay, what more uh, you, you, you need uh, okay, from a, a person, from an employee. So S.S. Watson was blessed with such a tremendous guy, uh, Mr. Subbo. He, he was a, a blessing uh, for Mr. S.S. Watson. Yet he had uh, such a charitable, uh, generous, charitable, generous, uh, uh, improvident, who spends money lavishly, a mm -hmm. provident man and judge he had enemies surprising me sign of exclamation is there after that so such person generally uh, is not supposed to have enemies or the rivals 
but such a charitable, improvident, generous, helping nature, selfless guy could have an enemy? Yes, yes was the answer to that question. There still, he had enemies, okay. Such a charitable enemy, was it because he seemed so close and intimate with the boss there? Uh, you see, jealousy, the reason may be, and we may be the reason, because he was number two, obviously he will be sticking to uh, a boss every now and then, you can see, uh, okay, SS Fasen, okay, aside or beside to uh, Mr. Uh, uh, SS Fasen, every now and then, there. He, he glued to SS Fasen all the time, SS Fasen also kept uh, uh, Mr. Subu with him all the time, therefore, it might have created some sort of jealousy, some sort of envy, okay, among uh, the other, uh, fellow being other uh, members of Gemini Studio. Okay, he was a sweet spoken guy, don't forget that too. Boss, or was it his general demeanor, general nature, general attitude, demeanor, attitude or nature uh, uh, that resembled uh, a psycho friend there? Sometimes people uh, may misunderstand uh, the nature of the person. Misunderstanding is inevitable there, okay, in our life. So, he was too sweet spoken, he was too quite composed guy that he could uh, give uh, the indication to his um, uh, his uh, colleague, his uh, uh, fellow beings or the members of the ministry that he was a bit flatterer, psycho uh, friend, a flatterer who uh, elaborates uh, the things in the appreciation uh, of someone there, okay, uh, in an exaggerated manner there, okay. Uh, for obviously his own benefit as well as the benefit of SS Fasen. So flatterer, F L E W G E R E R there, huh? He, he might uh, be giving uh, uh, some clues or the indication that he, uh, uh, for many people in Germanish Dio, uh, okay, he was taken as a psychophant. That may be the reason that why he had enemies. So when, or his readiness to say nice things about everything, in any case, or uh, you see, uh, he, he may uh, uh, okay, uh, be taken by the people uh, as a uh, double-faced uh, person, double-faced person that he, how uh, it is possible for a person to look cheerful all the time, to uh, speak sweet things all the time, okay, to be composed all the time. You, you may think sometime for such person, uh, he may be having two faces, yeah, okay, maybe something else in, in the inner heart, inner psyche or showing something else there. That may be the second reason why he had got enemies, uh, uh, okay, though he uh, was a, a man of uh, okay, multi-talented uh, facets. Yes, there was this man in makeup department, this man, office boy, this man, office boy in makeup department who would wish and direst worst, direst worst, W-O-R-S-T, worst thing for Subo. At least not many of the enemies are mentioned in this particular paragraph, uh, but at least one enemy was there of Subo, that was office boy, who took, who considered Mr. Uh, Subo as his arch rival, mortal enemy, and obviously blamed Mr. Subo for his fiasco, for his failure there. Okay, uh, so office boy, this man in uh, makeup department, office boy is uh, indicated here. You saw, uh, you saw uh, Subbu always of the boss, but in the attendance role, he uh, uh, was grouped under a department called the story department, comprising a lawyer and assembly of writers and poets there. You see, he was number two at Gemini Studio, so one may think, one might think that his uh, name must be written in the same attendance register at number two position, number two place, just after S.S. Watson. But it was not like that, meaning that his name was not written in the attendance of uh, management uh, 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 department uh, people there. His name was written in the register uh, that belonged to story writing department or who else or the other people were also there uh, uh, besides uh, Subhu's name. Uh, uh, they were lawyer, there was a lawyer and many other poets, many other right. So even you, you may be uh, surprised, astounded uh, that to, to find lawyer in story writing department, what the hell he is doing there? But yes, really, there was a lawyer also in story writing department. Poets, acceptable. Uh, writers, uh, uh, acceptable. But there was a lawyer also. And Subhu's name was enrolled in the same uh, in industrial of story writing department of Germany Studio. Not uh, with S.S. Fasen. Huh? Lawyer and his assembly of writers and the poet, the lawyer, was also officially known of the legal advisor, but everybody referred to him as the opposite there. 
lawyer, obviously, may be having the position in the Jamini studio as a legal advisor. So, whenever some uh, litigation matter may be there, uh, Mr. Lawyer may be coming into action with this suggestion to Mr. S. S. Watson that what may be uh, the, the, the steps to be taken in such litigation matter because filmmaking wasn't that much easy there. So, whenever there came such, uh, such litigation matter, obviously, legal advisor, the lawyer gave his legal advisor to assist Watson there. Uh, because of that only, his, uh, he was positioned in a story writing department. But he was considered just opposite. His position was taken as, uh, written as legal advisor. But uh, uh, the colleagues, the members of Germany Studio considered him opposite, illegal advisor. Opposite, illegal advisor. Or in the coming lines, he, the narrator is giving, a show Mitran is giving, why the legal advisor or the lawyer was considered opposite to his post. Yeah, that was illegal advisor. Uh, example is uh, given there. Check it out. Legal advisor, but everybody referred to him as an opposite illegal advisor. He was an extremely talented actress. Uh, example uh, starts. Huh? An extremely talented actress who was uh, uh, extremely temperamental, moody. Temperamental, uh, moody, uh, who uh, uh, could uh, just uh, uh, be upset, be angry uh, every now, short tempered, short tempered. Huh? Uh, talented actress who was uh, extremely temperamental, once blue uh, on the sides, blue uh, got upset, blue on the side got upset, got annoyed due to some reason. Uh, uh, actresses have got uh, their own, uh, uh, what you can say, their own attitude, their own uh, uh, mannerism there. Huh? Uh, therefore, uh, because of some reason, Mm, tantrums there, actors do have their tantrums there. So, one of the days, uh, one of uh, the newly emerging actors uh, lost a temper on the set. Then, what happened? Who was also extremely temperamental, one blew over on the sets while everyone stood stunned when she or when somebody is angry, must be uh, speaking some foul words also, bad words also against the person who caused uh, some sort of uh, 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 what can say problem uh, for the actress there. Uh, so, when she was speaking some uh, foul words or um, immoral words or unsuitable words, obviously for S.S. Fasan because he was the owner of Germany Studio, uh, everybody was stunned, shocked, how it is possible for a new, newly uh, uh, emerging actress to speak such words against the, uh, the, the, the owner, against the producer. Okay, then what was done by this lawyer, advisor, when she was speaking some uh, bad language about the producer? Uh, the lawyer quietly switched on the recording equipment. The recording was done by Mr. Legal Advisor. What are foul words? In uh, her anger, she cried out, she vomited. He recorded each and every word. And now he not only recorded, but also uh, recorded uh, to uh, when the actress posed for breath, when the anger was uh, ebbing down, uh, reducing uh, uh, there, decreasing there. Then, okay, he asked actress, okay, stop. And then what uh, uh, he did? When the actress was stopped for breath, the lawyer said to her, one minute man, please, and played back the recording. There was nothing incriminating there. Incriminating uh, to provide evidence. Incriminating to provide evidence against someone that he has committed some crime or guilt. And what is the incrimination here? The, uh, the clip, the recorded clip, which he played on again, once the uh, actress uh, stopped okay uh, for a second or two a minute or two he played uh, the recording again and when the uh, actress listened uh, to uh, her uh, what you can say tired t i r e d e uh, tired uh, 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 is a loud uh, uh, a critical uh, 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 okay speech angry also uh, the when the person is angry and when he or she speaks some foul words in anger, critical words he or she speaks, that is in, in his or her speech, that speech is known as tired. When she heard her voice again, her uh, foul words again, see the reaction. Actress, uh, uh, one, nothing incrementing of unmentionably foul about the actress tired, tired there. There was nothing uh, 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 abnormal, there was nothing wrong, that much wrong uh, about uh, the actress speech. Uh, an angry speech is called tired uh, with some sort of uh, 
default words also she might have used it there okay nothing unmentioned unmentionably uh, foul about the actress tired against uh, the producer but when she heard her voice again through the sound equipment to the recorder sound equipment recorder she was struck down she was awestruck she was dumbstruck she was astounded she was shocked she was oh my god what i did oh my god what i did there was nothing that much horrible that much terrible but still for an emerging actress you know, when uh, she was making uh, her debut okay okay how it is possible uh, for a debutant how it was possible for a debutant to use such words again the producer so she was shocked she didn't anticipate she didn't think that a person uh, around her might be recording her uh, tirade there so she lost obviously uh, all uh, her awareness and the conscience and conscience there when she listened it back again a girl uh, from the countryside and in that particular actress who was making a debut came from a village in the countryside village side area okay a countryside she hadn't gone through all the stages of worldly experience that generally precede uh, okay happened precede happened uh, uh, position of the importance and the sophistication that she had found herself catapulted into there you see uh, catapulted thrown into catapulted thrown into catapulted thrown into obviously that girl uh, uh, was uh, from a village area countryside area so uh, she didn't have in the idea of the experience of the city life uh, you see when we talk about uh, uh, the life uh, in city in the life in the villages there there is a sea change there people not now in those days i am talking about from the village or the countryside area generally are a bit innocent uh, more humble more polite more candid now uh, but the city obviously it is not so that all city people are like that only but yes there is a serious discrimination there when it comes to nature uh, of the city people uh, if it is compared to uh, village folk or the countryside so she didn't have the mannerism she didn't uh, uh, know the tricks and tricks of the city life especially in the film making industry film producing industry and therefore she thought herself uh, to be thrown into Uh, such discomfort uncomfortable position there without any reason without any reason and who catapulted uh, the actress into such a, a bizarre condition a nasty condition uh, 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 an abnormal condition uh, 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 obviously in a bad bad condition obviously the illegal advisor catapulted into No, she never quite recovered from the terror she felt that day and that was the end of a brief and brilliant acting career and after that she could not uh, be able to 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 uh, what can say come out of that shock there and that was the end of the so called promising uh, prospect of uh, the, uh, uh, the 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 newly emerging actress there she could have done better lot more than what she had actually did Uh, uh but uh, it was all in vain there and after that she could not recover okay from uh, uh, her uh, what i can say uh, in shocking state there her uh, last lines dear last lines dear she uh, never quite recovered that that was the end of a brief and brilliant acting career the legal advisor who was also a member of the show department had unwittingly unknowingly unwittingly unknowingly uh, not deliberately though unknowingly Uh, brought about uh, the sad end of the emerging actress newly emerging actress there while every one other member of the department wore a king, uh, kind of uniform khadi dhoti with a slightly oversized loose oversized loose and uh, clumsily awkwardly clumsily awkwardly tailored a uh, white khadi shirt the dhoti and uh, khadi dhoti and the khadi shirt were worn by all the story writing department members except one that was legal advisor that was lawyer that was lawyer uh, sometimes uh, uh, the uh, white khadi shirt but the legal advisor wore pant and a tie and sometimes a coat that looked like a coat of mail like a postman coat like a postman coat a khaki coat we can call it there huh? a four pocket coat four pocket coat so uh, the the attire attire of the lawyer or the legal ad- advisor was different vividly okay uh, than that of the other uh, the members of story writing department other uh, story writing department may be the pupil may be the disciple of gandhi therefore they wore a loose shirt khadi shirt and khadi dhoti but the legal advisor wore a pant a tie and sometime a mail coat there 
often he looked alone and helpless because his mannerism, his attitude, his demeanor okay, was not matching, you know, was not uh, uh, as accordance with the other members. Therefore, he could be seen uh, feeling all alone, aloof, isolated from the rest of the story writing department members there. A man of cold logic in a crowd of dreamers there. A court, and if somebody is a man of cold logic, that is the last word, that is the last word. If somebody is a man of cold logic, he doesn't value the emotions or the sentiments of other people. A person of cold logic means if a person doesn't understand the value or uh, uh, the emotions or the sentiments of other people, uh, such person is called man of cold logic. Mr. Lawyer was a man of cold logic there. Enough for today, dear. Please listen this uh, video clip uh, okay, time and again to uh, own your listening skills or comprehension part.